just stop it. Just tell me, tell me about possessions. Do you know about anything? I actually do. There's a uh, one story of the possession of Elizabeth Knapp. In the 1600s, in Groton, Massachusetts, the Knapp family uh, was the sort of servant um, workforce of a Puritan minister named Colton Mather. Colton Mather uh, was a very educated man. He did a lot of writing, a lot of reading, and he just so happened to provide one of the most complete accounts of uh, a supposed demonic possession in America. Uh, This possession was of the 16-year-old Elizabeth Knapp, who was uh, a servant of his at the time. Um, The story goes similar to most possession stories, most possession myths, if you you will, uh, that uh, Elizabeth was a normal girl, everything was going fine, and then about the age of her puberty, you know, teenage years, uh, she suddenly came down with fits and violent Episodes where she would be, you know, uh, saying things that were uh, very unlike her normal, uh, you know, demeanor. Uh, during this time, there were, you know, the, the standard sort of possession tropes. Things were showing up on her skin. She was, uh, according to to Colton Mather's report, she levitated. She did things that were outside of the natural physical abilities of a normal human. Her her arms and legs would get sort of grotesquely contorted and, and she would, you know, she'd, she'd move around in these weird sort of, you know, unhuman, non-human ways. Uh, so this obviously freaked her family out. They were very worried about it. Um, and Colton Mather was able to sort of document this, this possession as it was going on. And uh, in sort of contrast to the normal documentations of things like this, he had doctors over he had people who were physicians and who had science you know degrees and people who were like you know learned men of of the area they 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 came and verified everyone sort of had the consensus that yeah this is a demonic possession like these are people who were you know college educated not superstitious people who were like yeah this is this is something else uh some of the more creepy things that that she would say and this is kind of what what drew me to the story in that She's a 16-year-old servant girl in Massachusetts in the 1600s, but she's essentially giving this priest the business while they're they're doing this this possession. She's these very like you know venomous things are coming out of her. Um, it's similar to she would she would chant the words "money, money, misery, sin" over and over and over again in the night. Uh, they the the priest at one point attempted to have a dialogue with the you know quote unquote devil that was possessing her and. Um, she fired back and called him the greatest black rogue of all. And that even though it was uh, something similar to, even though the devil was in his chains, he could still knock your head from here. Um, so these very, wow. these very creepy, deep sort of demonic things coming from this girl who by all accounts is a farm girl somewhere, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot of, yeah, but you know, 16 years old and 1600 is like, you know, 45 nowadays. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah she, it's, it's totally different now. So, as with a lot of possession cases um, that we that we actually have, you know, some documentation on, um, this came from a very heavily religious area. This came from a person who was a figure of authority in the religious community. So you do, you know, you got to kind of take this with a grain of salt. Um, and there are several people that will tell you that this this well documented case of this woman was essentially uh, a girl who was struggling with mental issues and who was also struggling against her station in life. She was the servant of this person and she didn't have any, it was the 1600s in Massachusetts. Like she wasn't, there was no vertical movement. So at this point she's, you know, sort of railing against the authority figures of her time in the the only way she can, which is to just stop working, stop becoming the servant girl and, and to sort of change into this. So you're saying that it was just a bunch of bull and that you don't think that she was actually possessed by a demon? Because well, why not, dude? Yeah, you, there's there's a lot of great possession stories, too. Right. And I mean, that, that sort of begs the question and how many of these are have that sort of similar vein of the authoritarian kind of religious person dictating that this, you know, maybe slightly lower on the caste system person is kind of acting out of turn and not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And then all of a sudden it turns into demonic possession. So this was before the Salem witch trials, uh, right about the same time. So there's a there's a heavy current of the sort of uh, 
you know, the, the witch hunt uh, vibe. And it actually, interestingly enough, Colton Mather uh, served on some of the, um, I guess you would call them, if you could call it, judiciary boards for the Salem witch trials. But uh, actually voted against the the uh, burning and, and, and execution of several women because he, he wasn't, he didn't feel like they were actually witches. Colton Mather's a great name. It is. It, is. it, is. it sounds like a, like a, like a handsome cowboy. The, uh, like the, the fall guy? But yeah, something like that. Yeah, he's like a stunt guy or something like that. Hello, like I'm like Colton a Mathers. Yeah, yeah it's pretty it's good. He's like a Burt Reynolds role. I'm I've Colton been Mathers. blown up 24 times. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you become English all of a sudden? Wait, it's Colton. I get exploded very all the Mathers. time I do. What, one thing, it, it seems to me with uh, the cases like this, especially before it's a mania like the witch hunt tri- trials, where it, maybe it's just someone who happens to be way more intelligent than the people around her and just really flips out and gets right. mad. Yeah. You know, where she, she's had to hold it back because everyone around her is so oppressed intellectually and that just finally their intellect, just, this is the only way to burst out. Absolutely. Wow. I think that's, in addition to just sort of a reduced understanding of mental health issues, there's also a choler- choleric, go ahead. Uh, cholera, <laughs> cholera, good, good. cholera, good. where uh, choleric, choleric. So, I, I'm gonna mispronounce it, but it's uh, there's a disease where people uh, slowly lose uh, motor functions in a in a strange way, not in a my fingers don't work anymore, but they can't move their shoulders a certain way, so they walk funny or they that's do. called getting old. No, it's cholera, it's <laughs> cholera, and that's why a lot of the early settlers didn't really drink the water because of uh, bacteria in the water. They didn't really have a way to purify their water. So uh, cholera we would drives you. It's like you know, like uh, syphilis drives slowly eat your brain right. away until you go crazy. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, Which yeah. sounds like a great is dance the, song. Why is that funny? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's good. I'm like, oh, that that old joke. Right away. Away. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but d- what happened to this girl? All public record of this woman completely falls off the face of the earth after Colton Mather's report of her possession. Uh, there are some uh, people that claim to trace their lineage back to her, so there is some uh, sort of consensus that after this happened, she just sort of rejoined society, and it was kind of a, hey, Bep, you know, I was possessed by a demon when I was 16, but now I'm cool, and like we're just going to move forward with early 17th century Massachusetts. Public records probably did not, um, they were not very extensive back then. Yeah. There was that. <laughs> <laughs> Lord like a, knows, those, know. those floppy disks they had back then had like six megabytes at a, best. A turtle that has like some words carved in its shell. In its shell. <laughs> just let it go. There just, you go. Let it that's, go. That's like woods, like putting right. it in the cloud. Good enough. Good enough. Yeah. Put it in the uh, turtle instead of put it on the cloud. You gotta put it on the turtle and then just let it go. It's, it's, out the old town, it's out there. It's out there. It's out there, man. It's the, the town, town crier. It's just this tortoise that never went anywhere with just this cowbell on its neck. <laughs> Just and random just facts scrawled on its back. Yeah, you don't say. And if you, and if you hear the bell, Benelli. you're like, we're under to like that. That's your email. You're like, if you, oh, there, that's what's going on today on the turtle. They would just etch another message out into this poor turtle shell. Like, why? Yeah. Every moment is agony. <laughs> and then they would just go, ding a ding a ding a ding. And then everyone would come over and pass. Uh, I already tortoise. read this damn turtle's not even updating. Yeah. Slow ass turtle. You, can you refresh the turtle? <laughs> the, uh, daily, the daily tortoise.